welcome to Microsoft Mechanics. Coming up on the show, we give you a first look at how you can use operations management and security for unified management of your Linux and Windows Server environments at scale with Microsoft Azure, including configuration management of your hybrid environment and applications using Resource Manager templates and PowerShell DSC, applying your IT policy with OMS, and orchestrating operational tasks using PowerShell and graphical runbooks. So I'm joined by Eamon O'Reilly, an automation expert on the Azure management team. Welcome. Oh, thanks, Matt. Good to be here. So what's the significance of what we're doing here? We're given a common management approach for your infrastructure and your applications, spanning Azure and your on-premises data center. And this allows customers to now deliver um, resources on demand using automation across their incomplete environment. And this all runs from the cloud. And this all runs from the cloud. So how have you gone about achieving this? Yeah, so we already have an automation service that's a key component of OMS. And now with PowerShell open sourced on Linux, we now have a consistent management framework to actually perform actions on Linux and Windows. So can you show us an example of how this works? Yeah, I'm going to show you how you can do a complete automated deployment from the cloud where we have VMs and their applications deployed. And then also on premises, we're going to deploy some VMs and services to support your data on premises. So I'm inside my automation account. I'm going to go into my runbooks. And you can see here the set of runbooks that I've actually authored for this scenario today. Now, if people aren't familiar with runbooks, what are they? Yeah, so runbooks are basically a set of operational tasks that are automated, either graphically or using PowerShell. OK. So I'm going to go into my main parent runbook. And you can see this orchestrates a hybrid cloud deployment of a LAMP stack. Right. And it consists of three runbooks. You know, so I have a runbook here that deploys MySQL on my local uh, data center. I also have one that deploys Apache in a VM in Azure. And then if it's all successful, I can email the users that their deployment is complete, and they can start using um, that service. So these VMs that are going to deploy, they could be Windows or Linux. That's right. So there could be any number of the Linux distros that we support. In this case, I'm using Ubuntu. If I go into the, my MySQL environment, you can actually see that this one, if I scroll down, is running on a worker group we have. So this is the one I'm going to run in the data center. And then if I go back into my Apache one that's going to go into Azure, you can see that this one is not specified a hybrid worker. So this is going to run in our automation service and do the deployment from our service. So it's all going to be deployed centrally from this runbook. Yes, it's all going to be orchestrated from this runbook and do a full deployment of the LAMP stack. Now, one of the reasons this is important is it's a big challenge today for organizations to spin up a, an environment for development and production that's consistent across those environments on demand. Yeah, that's definitely right. Um, so if I go back into my runbooks, let me show you how this was built. So you can see here I have a runbook called Windows Linux ARM template. And if I go in and look at that, this is basically um, Azure Resource Manager template that I'm using to deploy the VM in Azure. OK, so if you're new to ARM, this is basically a JSON template. And, and we had a show a little while back with Corey Sanders that you can check out. Exactly. And so this is a standard JSON template. But one of the things I wanted to call out was, if I scroll down towards the bottom here, you can see that I'm registering this um, virtual machine with our automation service. So now I'm able to actually push, or it can pull the configuration from our service to actually install those services. And so if I go back out of here to my list of runbooks, you can see the runbook that actually calls this ARM template and deploys everything onto Azure. So this takes the parameters, the name of the virtual machine, and the type, if it's either Windows or Linux. And if I scroll down a little bit here, you can see I specify if it's the Ubuntu server, which it is now, I specify the type of a Ubuntu server I want, as well as that it's a DSC for Linux. And similarly, I could do it for Windows. And here's where I call that other runbook that I just showed you that actually generates the ARM template file for me. So this shows you how we can call other runbooks inside of here. And then the last thing I do is I pull in some information I need for the parameters of the ARM template. So here you can see I'm pulling in the password from our asset store, as well as the URI and key so it registers itself with the DSC service. And then I just deploy that ARM template automatically with those required parameters. OK. And so if I go back into runbooks, I have a similar one here that actually deploys it locally on premises. And this one is just using native PowerShell to actually deploy the VM and set up MySQL on premises. Cool. 
the last thing I could do is I really wanted to just start this. I could actually go in. I could click on start. And this is that parent run book I showed you initially, where I just give it the name of my Apache VM, mm -hmm. and this one will get created in Azure. I can give it the name of my MySQL one. That's the one that will get created in your on-premises data center. And then the email of who the users are, so they can get notified when it completes. And that kind of shows you how you can build out a LAMP stack directly using our automation service. So once it's finished, how do you know what configuration each VM will get and, and whether it's compliant with policy? Yeah, so if I go back to my automation account, you can see I have a DSC nodes blade here. And if I open this up, this actually shows all of the computers that are being managed through our PowerShell Desired State Configuration Service. And this allows them to pull the configuration they need. And so if I look at one of my Windows servers, I can drill in. I can see it's compliant and the last time it checked in. And if I drill in here, you can see the actual resources that I'm enabling inside that virtual machine. So I'm installing some Windows features for IAS and ASP.NET 4.5. Mm -hmm. I'm creating a website. I'm downloading the content for the website from Azure Storage. And then I actually go and download the OMS monitoring agent. And I install that monitoring agent into the VM as well. So now that we get monitoring capabilities on top of that, as well as desired state configuration. And all that's automated? Completely automated. Cool. That's the nice thing about desired state configuration. And then if you can see, this one just failed as well. Mm -hmm. And so if I went in, this is that Apache one that I just deployed. You can see that it's failed. And if I go in, I can actually see the resource that's failed. So it has an example file resource, and it's saying it's not compliant. And so then you can go back into the automation account, and you can actually look at these configurations to see what they're doing. Right. And so that first one I showed you was this website configuration, where I was setting everything up. And if I drill in here and look at the actual configuration, this is where I'm telling it what exactly it's supposed to configure inside of the OS. And so here you can see I was enabling IIS. This is the ASP 4.5. I'm creating a website. I'm con uh, copying content over. And then the last thing is I'm downloading the Microsoft uh, OMS agent. Mm -hmm. And you can see I'm installing the monitoring agent into the machine. So now it's under management and talking back into OMS. Great. And if I go back into the failed one, if you remember it was sample Linux, I can actually look at this configuration source. And this is actually installing Apache. So that was successful. But you saw that it was giving you a failure that this example file was failing. And if I look at what it was trying to do, I was checking to see, was this file present? And did it have this contents inside the file? And since it doesn't, since I just created a deployment, it's actually telling me that it's failed. And then I can actually go and resolve this. Now, to write these configurations and, and run books, could I use something like PowerShell ISE? Yeah, definitely. So there's an add-on available that allows you to author your PowerShell run books and your configurations. And you can install that from the PowerShell gallery. And just to emphasize, all of this management is happening from the cloud. Yes, it's all happening from the cloud. So it allows you to do complete management of Azure and on-premises from the cloud. Well, it's great to see how you can automatically deploy resources consistently across clouds and across Windows and Linux. Yes. So that's uh, one of the key things we have, is we can do management across both Windows and Linux. So now that we've deployed the infrastructure, what if I want to be able to do things like operational tasks within the workload, within the virtual machine? Yeah, so oftentimes, you know, you get the configuration right, but then you need to do these operational tasks. And if I go back to my run books, we actually want the ability to actually um, run commands directly on these machines. And one of the benefits of PowerShell, now available on Linux, is that we can actually run commands directly onto those machines to do these operational tasks, like orchestrating you know, cleaning up temp files, restarting services. Maybe you want to enable tracing for a period of time so you can get more diagnostics information. And I have a run book here, which is um, this new PowerShell command. And if I go ahead and start this, this actually runs PowerShell commands. It's going to run get process. It's a familiar command for most exactly. PowerShell Exactly. And I'll say include username so we can see what it's running under. And then I'm going to specify one of my Windows computers that we just saw under management. I'm going to say it's Windows. And because this machine is actually in my local data center, I'm going to tell the runbook to run on a hybrid worker and kick that off. And I'm actually going to run the exact same command. So get process again, and I'm going to include username. This time, I'm actually going to uh, specify that Linux computer that we have under management. And that one was called Finance Linux My SQL. And this time, I'm going to say it's Linux that I want to run it on. And again, this is inside my local data center. I could run these on Azure as well. But since this one's in my data center, I have to run it through the hybrid worker. Right. And so those are both submitted. And so let me edit um, the runbook and kind of show you how this is working. 
So if you remember, there's three parameters we asked for. So the command I want to run, the computer I run, want to run it on, and the type. Is it Windows or Linux? And then I ver just check. If it's Linux, then all I do is actually I get the credentials I need for that Linux uh, computer. And then I open up a session there. And then you can see here I'm actually running the new PowerShell shell that just became available on Linux. And I'm running the command there. And in the Windows scenario, because it's not Linux, I come down here. And I do, I get the credentials now for my Windows environment. And I create a command. And I just run it using the spa uh, standard invoke command you would see in PowerShell. Great. So a really unified approach. Exactly. And so now if I go back in here and I look at um, that run book again, I can go to the jobs. And you can see both of these are running. Uh, and so I can actually look at one I just ran this morning where they're running. And you can see the input I specified, the same machine. I put the same uh, get process in. And I specified Windows. And if I look at the output, here you can see all the processes yeah. that are available on there. They look like familiar processes. Yeah, I think this will look familiar to most people. And one thing to there, if I look for the health service, this is the um, OMS monitoring agent I talked about. You can see it's available, and it's running on the service. So we can get insights, analytics, logs from that machine. Exactly. Great. And similarly, if I go back and I look at another one that I ran, you can see this is the one that specifies against Linux, mm -hmm. the exact same command. And if I go to the output here, you can now see all of the processes that are running on that Linux machine that I just deployed. So cron, Python, lots of familiar. Exactly. So one of the Linux ones admins. that we specified was we wanted MySQL mm -hmm. on that machine, because that's the one we deployed. And you can see MySQL was configured, and it's running inside that service. And also, you can see that PowerShell. So we were using that PowerShell shell that just came out now with open source of Linux, of PowerShell on Linux. It's actually running those commands. And it's the same language across Windows and Linux. Exactly. And if uh, people want to get involved with um, PowerShell on Windows and Linux, there's a great community out there that supports us. So where's all this going? Yeah, so our goal is to build the best heterogeneous and hybrid cloud automation solution for Azure and on-premises. And with PowerShell now available on Windows and Linux, we have a consistent management <coughs> solution that you can actually use across both of those. So across your environments, on-premises, and in the cloud, and Windows exactly. and Linux. Great. So how would you recommend somebody get started? Yeah, so if somebody wants to get um, started, I would go to the uh, operations management security site, sign up from there. Or if they're already using the Azure portal, they can get the automation service from there. Great. And there's some great resources around PowerShell. And if they really want to get involved, they can go to the GitHub uh, site and actually look at PowerShell up on GitHub. Great. Thanks for the awesome overview, Eamon. Lots to explore there. And keep watching Microsoft Mechanics for the latest tech updates. Bye for now.